how to build a peaceful coexistence through religious freedom. Uh, there are several possibilities, and I would like to mention seven principles about building, really, the promotion, be, building a co a peaceful coexistence through the promotion. And as you see also, I would like to thank the expert. You know, we have been with our expert for more than 20 years. Some of them were with us 20 years ago, like Professor Rosa Maria Martinez, and also Professor Calderon, 20 years ago we first, Rosa Maria, Blondin, and so on. And now, how we can do that? You know, first thing, we have to respect other. That is the first principle. If you want to be respected in spite of your religion, you must respect others in spite of their religion. Jesus and several religious traditions gives us this great principle. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophet. It means if you are Christian, remember what Jesus says. Love your neighbor as yourself. He did not say love your neighbor only if they are if he is or she is Christian or Jewish or Muslim, love your neighbor. Love is God's commandment, and if there is no respect, there is no love. Second principle, build bridges. We cannot promote religious freedom for all in ignoring those who don't believe like us. We cannot make peace alone. Don't wait to have war to build bridges with others. It will be too late. I remember what uh, Bishop Stoll said, the former president of our association, and also the former secretary of the Lutheran World Federation said to me, he said that in 2005, when you had this uh, big crisis about the Danish cartoon about, you know, the Muslim. He said, uh, we have no problem. We had no problem in Norway because we had good relations with all religious leaders. Principle number three, practice a soft diplomacy. Uh, I was in Manila during the Fifth World Congress and I was working with Professor Abdel Fattah Amor he was at this time the president of the Human Rights Committee at the United Nations. He was also uh, the special reporter. And I asked I ask him the question, what are the most important qualities for an ambassador of religious freedom? And his answer was, when I visit countries, I have no army protecting me, no fortune. I am not a celebrity. And I come to investigate about their respect of religious freedom. I learned that three qualities are important. Respect, integrity, perseverance. And of course, I have already mentioned respect. When you add integrity and perseverance, you get a soft diplomacy. It's not always easy. Why? Because in promoting religious freedom, we see ourselves on the human rights side. We are defending the truth. We are promoting a democratic value. We are on the side of good. They are on the side of the evil. But don't forget, we are missing. We are meeting people who have accepted to meet us. And very often, they have accepted to speak another language to make our meeting easier for us. Do we want to be perceived as arrogant? But however, practicing a soft diplomacy does not mean we compromise on our religious freedom principle based on Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Religious freedom is more than religious tolerance or religious statu quo when we defend and promote religious freedom. 
we defend and promote an individual right, a human right, a universal right. Four, reach children and people. The promotion of religious freedom should reach children and young people and go to academies, colleges, and universities. We should also multiply the number of religious liberty centers as we have in Colonge, in Andrews, in La Plata, and built a university center network. And I want to congratulate uh, Alan Heinach, uh, the Council of Church State, and also Nala for the work they have done with the students. Five, old public events. Holding public events is one of the best ways to promote religious freedom and to develop a large network of friends. That is, why the, that is what the OILE have done for years. In less than 20 years, we initiated, supported, and held more than 70 international public events on the five continents. And you can do that at the local level. And since I have been retired, we did that where I am, you know, at the local level, and people came, officials came, it's possible. You can start to do something where you are, with what you have, but do something. Sometimes people don't want to do something because they are afraid to fail, because they say we are not perfect. It would be an imperfect event. But an imperfect event is better than a perfect non-event. Six, give a public thanks to a country that protects religious freedom. In 1997, I began to dream about a large public event. It call, I call it the Festival of Religious Freedom. We held the first one in Rio de Janeiro following the Fourth World Congress. And after all World Congress, as it will be the case on Saturday, we had a gathering, a large gathering. But in 2006, after more than 10 years traveling around the world, I understood the privilege we had, I had, to live in a country where I have religious freedom. And I thought that I did nothing for the freedom I have, nothing, just I got it, like a gift. But did I say thank you for the gift I got? No. And the idea came that we should have a large gathering to say thank you to God and thank you to my country for religious freedom. Because I did nothing and got him and I know that religious freedom has a price and some people pay the price. Did I say to them thank you? Did I say to those who protect me thank you? And that was the beginning of a great experience. You know, we had a large meeting in Mexico, in Angola, in Colombia, in Trinidad, Dominican Republic, Romania, England, Peru, Ghana, South Korea, and, and so on, Jama and without forgetting, of course, Jamaica. Dear Nigel, Jamaica. We organized a festival in 35 countries and gathering more than 270,000 people. Up to today, I have not heard that any other organization or churches have done such a large gathering. And I wish we will continue. I wish we will have a third world festival and I will be invited. Please invite me before 2030 or 40 because I may not be there. <laughs> we should not be satisfied, dear friends, with one event every year or every five years with an article or a sermon every year, with a meeting with 50 or 60 people, or a congress or a symposium every 10 or 20 years. We should do better. Seven, be persistent. You have noticed that we are attending the Eighth World Congress. When I was elected to be the new ILA Secretary General, Bird Beach, Bird Beach, uh, said to me, there is a Congress to organize. And that was the fourth World Congress. We started to have a tradition. They had already 
three World Congress. It started in Amsterdam in 1977. And we continue. You know, when you receive an invitation to be part of a Congress of an event, and you read 10s, 15s, it means something. It means there is a history behind. And it gives credibility to the event, credibility to your association. You know, we start long, several years ago, the Pan-African Congress, the Pan-Asian Congress, the Pan-South American Congress. It has to be continued. I was so happy that when um, someone from uh, the division in Africa said, we will have in 2019 the fourth Pan-African Congress in Kigali. You know, we are in the process to build something. If you want to build something, you have to continue. You cannot just be happy and to just put the first stone and after 10 years later, maybe the second stone. Where are you going in doing that? If you put the first stone, you have to know when you will add the second stone, the third stone, and at the end, you will build a temple or a cathedral. Be persistent. We have to be persistent when we start something. Congresses, symposium, this is why I recommend that we start with the first in thinking that because we start with the first, we will always already plan the second one and the third one. Be persistent and keep in mind that every event could be the beginning of a great adventure. And dear friends, dear participants, I wish all of you will leave this Congress with a strong vision with a dream, with a project, with a decision to do your best to become not just an observer, but an actor in the battle of religious freedom for all. You will make a difference. You will make a difference in your life. You will make a difference in the life of your community you will make a difference in the life of your country. May God bless you. Thanks.